I'm not really sure where I'm going, but why not just grab a picnic table just right over there and just sit down and start talking. Don't have to go far. <laughs> it's not really the cycling conditions yet, but I got a nice spot here. How is this for light? I guess it's all right, eh? Yeah, just gonna have to do. So, hello. <laughs> yeah, it's George here. Boom. It's the end of March. It's Good Friday. Time for my monthly unscripted vlog. And uh, I think I got a lot to tell you, but I don't know how much of it you're going to find relevant. Well, after coming back from Puerto Vallarta earlier this month, uh, you know, it's hard to adapt to the Canadian climate. I'll be honest with you there. See, we got here, the night we got here, it was minus 28 at the airport. But, you know, the temperatures were rising above the zero mark in the uh, days right after kind of thing. And, uh, you know, then throughout the month, it was just an up and down. There were days when it was plus 16, which is like 60 something in Fahrenheit. Uh, I think you've seen me, possibly you've seen that video, you've seen me work on my truck and I was quite enjoying it. And then all of a sudden, boom, the next day, wake up, snow is blowing everywhere and it's minus 10 or something like that in the morning. And, you know, the whole thing that I had on my mind for that day was totally changed and I was just wishing, I was just wishing that we would have stayed in Puerto Vallarta for just a few more weeks. And I, I'll be honest with you, uh, the, the goal is eventually to stay somewhere warm till the end of March because it's, it's just March is a, a weird month, you know, and they said this year was kind of an El Nino year. So it was actually supposed to be warmer than normal. But I think what actually happens is that you get a few days where the average is like way out of the range. Like when it's 16 in March, like this is not normal. Or maybe it is, I don't know, but it is extreme. And then, well, it goes back to kind of what's normal and all of a sudden it's like minus 10 or whatever. and. You're freezing your butt off, but uh, in your mind, you you want to do all the things that spring allows you to do, and it's just not ready. So a lot of you are probably wondering about what's up with this pickup truck that I bought. I had some comments. Some of you were wondering why I bought such an old pickup that needs so much work. To be honest with you, uh, it kind of just dawns on me how much this actually needs, but got to give you a little bit of history like back in the day when I was in my 20s uh, <laughs> this is how I used to buy my cars you know they always needed a lot of work to get them on the road and uh, it seemed like you know I was getting a hell of a deal and then uh, I'd fix it up with cheap parts with just doing what, whatever is the most necessary first and then you know, kind of get it on the road and then uh, fixing it up as I was going. And it will always work good for me. And well, now that I'm like, I can't even say this, I'm 61. I haven't worked on cars like this for quite some time, but when my pickup truck got stolen, uh, it was like, it seemed impossible just to, to go out and get one uh, because they're expensive. If you want something that runs, it's expensive. And there are like, the newer you get, the more things are on them that can go wrong. So I didn't want to get something that, you know, somebody else wore out and it's got lots of things that are already going wrong and that I don't necessarily understand because my mechanics knowledge, while it's quite extensive, I've been through mechanic schools back in the late 80s, like when my truck was brand new. So I'm, I'm pretty good at fixing up mechanical trucks, but I'm not so good at troubleshooting electronics. And, uh, you know, maybe there's, there's some parts in there that uh, you, you can't really 
rebuild you have to kind of just replace them and stuff whereas with this 1989 the one i bought is in relatively like it's complete it's it's not that terrible but i mean overall it, it still is quite some challenge to get this back together and quite honestly buying this in march i thought well going forward i'm gonna have uh, decent enough weather so i can work on it all the time whenever i don't have any service calls for uh, my handyman business and i like you know in my head i could do it all but in, in reality uh, it's probably going to take me a little longer to get this on the road than i first imagined but the other thing is I quite enjoy working on this thing. You know, it's a project that uh, when I was in Mexico, in my head, I was looking at uh, the marketplace ad for this very truck. And I thought, well, this, this thing has potential and the price wasn't outrageous. So then uh, when it was still available, once I got home here, I, I made an appointment, looked at the thing and bought it on the spot got the price bargain down uh, by 400 bucks so I was quite happy about that there were other trucks like that that I uh, considered but you know that there was a 1973 Dodge when I was younger I had a 1976 like that for about 11 years or so and I had bought this truck with the engine knocking so the first thing even to get it on the road was to rebuild the engine. This was a 318 cubic inch. It was a fantastic truck, you know, but yeah, it took a lot of work to get it going. And there was one just like that, mind you, it was a 1973 that was on Marketplace here, probably still there because the asking price is five thousand dollars and they claim that it runs but it doesn't drive and it's a project truck there's a whole lot of things that need to be done probably no better than what i bought but it's five grand like who wants to spend five grand on something that's eventually going to end up being a work truck you know and uh, a 73 dodge while it's old it's not really that sought after after uh, as a collector's item so yeah no uh, if they would have let it go for a thousand bucks i would have had a blast with that thing but uh, they didn't so i ended up buying the chevrolet i'm working on it now little by little but just look around me it's still winter here can't do anything today it's out in the driveway so that's the reality i got videos coming about what i did so far and it's quite a bit but needs more of course one guy, he gave me a tip like with my oil filter that's still stuck by the way right now, but it's more because, you know, I, I hate crawling under the truck when it's below freezing. One guy said, just take a big punch on the hammer and whack it out of there. Well, unfortunately, this is not an option because of the position. I mean, I, I did try that, but the problem is that I don't have enough room there to swing the hammer and a big enough punch and stuff, but I've got some ideas and uh, it's, it's gonna come off. There's no doubt about it. It's just, you know, when you're lying under the truck with very little room to work, then um, you know, all these things that seem quite easy to do when you look at it with a camera or whatever, well, it's not really that easy in the position that you're in. And it's also cold. <laughs> I think I, I'm repeating myself there. So, yeah, enough about the truck, you know. I still got recordings from Puerto Vallarta and uh, they're kind of beautiful. And I haven't had the time to edit the stuff and post it. And I'm wondering if there's any point now because the stuff's getting so old, you know. Barbara and I, we walked a lot around town there and there's a lot of things that I recorded that I found really interesting at the time and wanted to make a video about it kind of right away. But then uh, time went on, you know, and I, I made a few videos that I think were quite good. You know, some of you may, may have found it interesting and maybe some of you just found them boring. I don't know. See, the main thing for me about making these videos is still 
like I enjoy making these videos and sometimes it's just a random thing sometimes I have a brilliant idea and I act on it make a nice video about it and stuff and sometimes it's just like hey it's the end of the month I gotta make an unscripted vlog and this is what I'm doing today so yeah I'm trying to remember remember some of the comments that I had on my channel I already responded to two of them and other than that well there isn't much going on in life right now you know it's uh, waiting for better weather basically and uh, trying to do what I can Barbara is preparing for painting some murals and uh, I'm gonna be helping her with that little service calls here and there for my handyman business but it's nothing major you know that's why like whether I be here or not here doesn't make a big difference the only thing is you know uh, once it gets really busy then uh, with the way I'm equipped right now there'll be uh, probably a whole bunch of jobs again that I won't be able to do because I don't have the right vehicle for it like the, the truck would really come in handy so in that case you know just gotta take it as it comes and uh, you know try to get this truck on the road eventually and well yeah there's so much to do on it even yeah what can i say it's just uh, the way it is right any truck that would have been ready to work with would have cost five thousand dollars plus probably more in the uh, the area of ten thousand and i i don't want payments so this for me is the most economical way of course if i don't really count my time you know I have to admit to that that the time is definitely worth something but it is something that I can enjoy doing so that's why I'm doing it that way still got to do that tree in the backyard and I was working on making a rope ladder for that that was before we went to Mexico you know this is all gonna hit me all at once business is gonna pick up then the weather is going to get good enough to work on this truck all at the same time. There's only a small window to really do the tree because once the leaves and stuff are on, it's so much harder to do. There are trees to be pruned. And hell, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to a camera. But uh, yeah, that's just how it is. You know, it's a holiday weekend. I wish everybody a happy Easter. I hope uh, you can relate to some of the stuff that I'm talking about. Uh, probably I'm not alone with uh, having these these kind of problems. Cycling conditions in Edmonton, guys, it's not that great yet. There, it'd be good if it was the conditions were more consistent. It is on and off. You know, there's some really bad ice, and there's some packed snow, which is quite good when you have studded tires. Then there's bare pavements, but it's not consistent. So if you're riding, you always have to be on high alert. <laughs> That's the problem. All right. Talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.